Good morning, everyone, or should I say good afternoon by the time you're viewing this. This is Friday of the second week of Easter, and I'm continuing my discussion on Holy Mass. There's so many parts of the Mass that you and I can dive in to look at the mystery of that particular piece. As I say so often, it's not about parts. It's about the one salvific moment. So yesterday we talked about the offertory a little bit. We concluded that section. And after the offertory, we spoke about the prayer over the offerings, didn't we? The prayer over the offerings. We talked about the orations and that word orons. See the priest's hands, that of Christ on the cross. So the orons position. And then we talked about the preface dialogue. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And then we went into the preface right before the Eucharistic prayer. It's that hallway that the angels lead us around the sacrifice of the Mass. Because all the angels and the saints encircle the altar. Because there's only one eternal sacrifice. And how beautiful the angels and the saints encircle the altar in adoration as they sing, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we kneel in adoration. So at every single Mass, when the Holy Holy is being sung or recited, do you realize all nine choirs of angels are encircling around the altar? All the saints? How beautiful that moment is and God's people join the angels and the saints in kneeling in adoration. And then we begin the Eucharistic prayer. And I was telling you about the Eucharistic prayer, how the priest bends over slightly as he picks up the host. It's Christ. And you can see him bending over slightly with the cross on his shoulder. See, I'm even pointing to my right shoulder. It's always right. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. It's always right. And the same with, with the chalice. And I told you about the commingling, didn't I? About the drop of water that came forth from the side of Christ. Blood and water gushed forth from the side of Christ. There, his right side. The sacramental life of the church is born. I want to talk to you a little bit about a dressed chalice. The chalice veil. Sometimes we don't see this. It's not that it's been discontinued. Don't think that it's, it's optional. And so that's why in some parishes you will see them use this and then you would see them not use this. So I don't want you to think it's required and why isn't Father doing that? It's part of local custom too. But I want to show you the chalice veil that goes over the chalice. And what does this it signify? Because this veil helps us to understand that he is robed in the flesh. He's robed in the flesh. The veil. He's entered through the veil of the flesh. God himself has entered in through the veil of the sacrament in the flesh. And so the veil. Just a reminder. Huh? Then I want to tell you about this linen. Do you know this linen that goes on the altar? It's called a corporal. 
and you'll see Father place this linen on the altar. A corporal. What does the word corporal mean? Body. So the body of Christ lays upon this corporal. What does it signify spiritually? There's always a spiritual connotation to it. Like I said about the veil, the veil wrote in the flesh, the corporal. This signifies the shroud. Do you know he was wrapped? His body was wrapped in the shroud. This is signifies the shroud. The pall. The pall goes over the top of the chalice and paten. The pall, like the stone, that encloses or encapsulates the body. See, this is all part of the sacrifice as well. It's a hard cardboard square. The pole. It's pronounced P Paul and it's spelled P A L L. Paul. You know the funeral pole? It goes over the casket, over the body. The pole, over the body. The corporal. Ooh, the purificator. Here's the corporal. I was just testing it. Here's the purificator. The purificator is the linen in which when the priest drinks and wipes the chalice, and then when he cleans the chalice, right? This is the linen. It's called the purificator. The significance and the spiritual connotation is Veronica's veil that wiped the blood-stained face of Jesus. So the blood-stained face of Jesus on the way of the cross, the blood face stain of Jesus at Mass. Veronica's veil. The shroud. The stone. Robed in flesh. The veil, the purificator, Veronica's veil, the pactin. Remember all of our prayers, anxieties, worries, sins, right here with the piece of unleavened bread that goes in the pactin. And it's Christ here, Christ's own body holds this. It's all contained within his hands and it's placed right here. The chalice. The chalice in which the wine and the drop of water will be placed. His blood. Remember I told you, did you ever see pictures of the chalice right by the hands of Jesus and the blood dripping into the chalice from the hands and the blood dripping from the feet into the chalice. How beautiful that is. And there you have it, everyone, the veiled chalice. So the purificator, the pattern, the Paul, the corporal, and the veil. The dress trappers. And they all have a significance. I don't know if you know that. Because you know why it's brought over and we don't really reflect upon it. But there's a spirituality in every part of the Mass. And do you see how the Mass is biblical? I'm, I'm, I'm referring to all those parts that we use 
that we find in sacred scripture from the procession and the journey that's found in the scriptures from the altar of sacrifice that is found in the scripture the altar of the cross they say the altar of sacrifice that's why the cross is always placed on the altar or near the altar the cross I mean the crucifix because we use those words interchangeably but we understand cross to be crucifix the kissing of the place of the sacrifice the going to the chair and the significance of the chair the sign of the cross and the greeting go to look at Paul's letters he greets us the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the communion of the Holy Spirit the reflection of our own sins the Gloria the song of the angels at the birth of Christ the opening collect, the first oration of the three major orations, and the priest's hands. Christ's hands. So all these parts, and I want you to review back about what they mean and what the significance of these parts mean. And the chalice. The chalice is brought over from a side table that's called a credence table. Now, you'll probably know that in St. Mary's Church, there are two credence tables. You've seen them, haven't you? The credence table is always next to a server because that is where the server performs the ministry in which he or she is entitled to do at the sacred liturgy. So on this side of the sanctuary is the credus table for the acolytes, those who are serving. Serving and bringing up the elements, the chalice, the washing of the hands, which we will get to in a minute, and places it on the altar so the deacon can prepare. This credus table is where the missile is placed and a liturgical binder for the creed and the universal prayer and so the server that sits on this side handles the books so the priest can remain with his hands in the orans position so the cross and book server on this side with his or her credence table the acolytes on this side with his or her credence table. So you have them on both sides as they perform their ministry. So I wanted to tell you about the lavabo dish and finger towel is the next thing. Wash, O oh Lord, my iniquities, Cleanse me from my sins. Isn't that beautiful? That's what the priest says. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Because the per priest, although he is acting in the person of Christ, is among God's people. And he himself must remember that he would not be doing this unless by God's grace and mindful of his own sinfulness he asked the lord to wash away his sins and iniquities also remember pontius pilate washed his hands didn't he i would have nothing to do with the death of this just man do with him what you will symbolically he washed his hands of that it has a couple connotations also. It's a remembrance of that and also of saying like, I don't want the death of the Lord in one way because my own sins have done this. So I acknowledge that. 
But at the same time, the priest cannot shirk the responsibility he has. He has a great responsibility in making sure he defends. That's why sometimes Pontius Pilate, what type of person was Pontius Pilate? He recognized that this was a good and just man, but he was afraid of what the people would do or say about him. I don't want anything to do with the death of this man. You do with him what you want. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. So it reminds the priest he's a baptized member of the community. Even though he's standing in the person of Christ, he himself is a baptized member of the community. And relying on that gift of baptism that washed away his sins. How beautiful it is. And even in the celebration of the Mass, how the blood and water flowed from the side of Christ. Not only is it recalled in the commingling in the chalice, but how that baptism affects the priest too, because flesh touches the water. See, flesh was the water was poured into the chalice because it came from the side of Christ, but in baptism, flesh touched the water. And so the priest touches the water. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Oh, it recalls his baptism. His baptism. And we should never shirk the responsibility of defending Christ. It was necessary that Christ died to save us. But how, why did he die? Because of our own sinfulness. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. This is called a finger towel. <laughs> Rightly so, right? A finger towel. Some may say it's a tiny purificator. <laughs> well, in one sense. But in another sense, its purpose is just to cleanse the hands, okay? To cleanse the hands. And it's important, it's important that the priest remembers a lot of these things. When he puts his hands around these, the towel and wipes his hands, times that Christ was roped and his hands were tied, all for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to bring salvation to the world. How beautiful. And that was given to us in baptism. And it's nourished by the food of the Eucharist. Baptism and Eucharist. Salvation sacraments. The birth of the sacramental church was on the cross. Remember I told you you probably would say that the birthday of the church is Pentecost. In number, sure, in people, in all nations, absolutely. But the sacramental birth of the church, Good Friday, it happened on the cross. And I told you, I gave a homily about, and I think it was on Divine Mercy Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, but the homily was that all seven sacraments are found on the cross. Why don't you go back to that video in YouTube channel? All seven sacraments. So do yourself a favor, why don't you write down right now all seven sacraments and can you see them on the cross? I hope they're clear to you. After the priest washes his hands, He'll go back to the center of the altar and he will have the prayer over the offerings, the preface dialogue, the preface, the Eucharistic prayer and the consecration. Beautiful. Well, everyone, I thank you for joining me today on this Friday, the second week of Lent. Let us continue our journey of the study of Mass and its spirituality. Have a nice weekend.